Hello, and welcome to Catholicism in the Car. My name is Parker Zerbo. All right, today I want to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is the Franciscan School of Theology. Now, before you get all confused, I'm not talking about the Franciscan University of Steubenville. I'm not talking about the, uh, the I forget the exact name of it, but the Franciscan School out in uh, California. I'm not talking about a particular educational institution. I'm talking about a, a theological um, school in the, in the larger sense of that word that has persisted in the church since... Uh, since the time of St. Francis. I would say it, it probably started with St. Anthony in, in a lot of respects, uh, St. Anthony de Padua, uh, and then you would get uh, St. Bonaventure, St. Alexander of Hales, uh, Blessed John Dun Scotus. Uh, there were a bunch more then after him who were kind of followers of Scotus, a number of his disciples, you could say, that furthered his views um, and developed them in their own individual ways a little bit. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know a lot about, about his followers, his, his direct followers as much. Um, and then you get to people like uh, 16th, maybe the 17th century, I think it's the late, late 16th century though, uh, St. Lawrence of Brindisi, because I believe St. Lawrence of Brindisi uh, was actually uh, at the, uh, the Battle of Lepanto. I believe he was a, a chaplain on one of the ships and was, was fervently praying to Our Lady I want to say he got shot by an arrow. I might be wrong on that. Uh, he almost got shot by an arrow, but it miraculously stopped or something. I'll have to kind of recheck my memory on some of his stories. But the reason this has been on my mind, and, and this has been on my mind a lot, is um, I, I, I first started reading uh, St. Bonaventure, and then obviously seen a lot of the, the writings about uh, St. Francis from before that. Um, St. Francis only has really, I think it's only one writing that we actually know is from him, uh, or at least have a really good uh, academic understanding that it's from him, and that's the, the Canticle of Brother, Son, and Sister Moon, the Canticle of Creatures, is that usually what it's called, which is a poem that he wrote uh, praising God in all of his creation. But there are many, many uh, other sources of people who, who were contemporaries of St. Francis and knew him very well who wrote down uh, different lives St. Francis. And one of those people was uh, St. Bonaventure. And his life of St. Francis, um, it, it was written, I don't know, probably 20 years, maybe 30 years after Francis's death. Francis died in 1226. 1226. Um, and I think St. Bonaventure's work about him was written in the 1230s or 1240s. Um, so that, that was probably the first introduction I had to St. Bonaventure, which which I would I would recommend that to people because a lot that's probably his most accessible work and his the, the work of his that's most easily read. Um, and then uh, I read his his Breviloquium, which is kind of his, the equivalent of the Summa Theologica, but for Saint Bonaventure, and it's much much shorter than the Summa Theologica. The Summa Theologica can be broken down at least today. I think it's a three volume set. And each volume has somewhere between 800 and 1,000 pages in it. So you're talking 3,000 plus pages of a work, whereas Bonaventure's Breviloquium, um, it, it's kind of like a catechism almost, although it takes a very scholastic approach. Um, you have to kind of get some, you have to get used to scholastic writing. And, and I think it's a good work to get used to scholastic writing um, and how they how they would write uh, in that sort of academic style. And it's incredibly beautiful. So, say Bonaventure, uh, I read his I read his Breviloquium, uh, and then I, then I got into a number of his other works uh, as well. And this was all while I was discerning the religious life while I was a Franciscan. And he has really stuck with me. His, his philosopher, well, his philosophy, yes, and then also, his theology are—they're um, of a different sort. 
then that which comes out of what we call the Dominican school, which is which is uh, generally traces itself back to St. Thomas Aquinas, um, and it has it has just a different feel to it, it has a different emphasis. Some would say that the Franciscan school um, and St. Bonaventure in particular are more um, Platonic, so they or like Neoplatonic, so they follow Plato or the Neoplatonists like Plotinus um, and, uh, and Plutarch, who was his, his uh, kind of his scribe, <laughs> um, and then and then Augustine, who, who follows them, who follows the, the Neoplatonics in a lot of ways. Um, and Saint Bonaventure was very influenced by uh, Saint Augustine, and you could probably say Saint Anselm as well. Uh, I think you could definitely say that. And and so it's it's kind of difficult to describe what the what the difference is that kind of underlies the Franciscan school. Just I'm I'm just talking not in particular like teachings of the of the school, but but in the in the general like sense that you get as compared to other schools of theology within the Catholic Church. Side note, I know of at least I think four, maybe five schools of theology within the Catholic Church. So there's the Dominican school following St. Thomas Aquinas, there's the Franciscan school after Bonaventure, Alexander of Hales, Duns Scotus, and many others. Um, there is the, uh, you could probably say the Jesuit school, which takes people um, like, uh, oh goodness, I'm blanking on his name, uh, Molina, um, I think it was Francis Molina. Anyway, there's a theological understanding in Catholicism. I think I've mentioned it before, maybe in the episodes on synergy, synergism and monergism, but it's called Molinism after after uh, this Jesuit. Um, and then you also have people like uh, Suarez, Francisco Suarez, um, who also is pretty uh, definitive in the, in the Jesuit school. Um, and you also have the Augustinians, which the Franciscans do end up agreeing a lot, in, in, a, in a lot of ways with the Augustinians because of Bonaventure's contributions there. Um, so that's four. And then I'm not sure if this is one, but I think you could say that it is, uh, is the, the Carmelite spirit, uh, the Carmelite school, um, which the only works that I'm familiar with are more spiritual works, not necessarily theological works, um, and those would be the works of St. John of the Cross and St. Teresa of Avila. So that, that there's at least five schools there, and, and you can break some of them down into different schools. I know the Jesuits can be kind of broken down into Molinism and, and those that follow Suarez, um, and there's probably others as well. And then there's um, you know, the Franciscan school can break down more into those who side more with, with Bonaventure on a lot of things than those who side with Scotus on a lot of things. Although the Franciscan school itself kind of it does a nice combination of both Bonaventure and Scotus and tries to make complementarity in any way that they can where the two thinkers disagree. And, that, and a lot of further thinkers will kind of, they develop more fully. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that pretty much sums it up for now. Uh, I want to continue talking about it though, because the Franciscan school of theology, I think, has a lot to offer the church in today's world, starting in the late 19th century and then for a lot of the 20th century. The church has mainly been Thomas, and I think that was for some good reason. I think it was done for some, with some good intentions. But um, since the Second Vatican Council, the church has kind of opened up those doors again. Uh, not that they were ever really closed, but there was just, in my understanding, I didn't live back then, but obviously. But in my understanding, uh, there were, well, I'm going to have to pick this up after work. We'll see you then. Oh, uh, real quick, real quick, please feel free to uh, subscribe to any of my podcasts on any of the podcast players. Find me on YouTube. Please subscribe. Like me on Facebook, like the Catholicism Car channel on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're all there. Catholicism Car. Find me. And then I also have a Patreon account if you wish to support what I do at this, at this podcast and this YouTube channel. And you can also support us on anchor.fm. There's a support button there you click on. I also have links to all of this on my website's support page at www.catholicisminthecar.com.